Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for another episode of Kerbal Space Program 2 and I'm really excited to tell you about today's topic because the modding community did it once again, it is fixing the game. Now at first I was a little bit worried that the game wasn't moddable right off the bat but apparently it is and this is the best decisions the developers could ever have made. While we are waiting for official patches and bug fixes which might take weeks or even months, the modding community will make this game great. I'm gonna include a bunch of chapters in the description in case you want to skip to a specific part of the video. First of all we're gonna have a look at all the mods that currently exist, then I'm gonna showcase a couple of them that I found particularly useful in my playthrough, and finally I'm gonna give you a quick guide on how to install them. So without any further ado, let's get this started. Spacedock.info, I will put this website into the description as well, sorted for the most popular mods and at the moment you can see there are quite a few, not that many, the modding community just got started on it but it seems to be rather clean. Right now I'm just going to go through all the mods with a brief description in order to let you know what they do and then you might be able to decide for yourself whether or not this is a mod for you. First mod on the list here is Lazy Orbit, which allows you to set a vessel's orbit, rendezvous point or even land on a planet using the Alt-H menu. Sticky Orbit markers I personally have installed, which allows you to permanently see your periapsis and apoapsis by right-clicking them. Maneuver Node Controller, another mod I have installed, allowing me to manipulate my maneuver node in smaller or larger steps with a simple click interface and this is just such a time saver. Also allows you to get much more precise maneuvers. Stage Info is another crucial mod that is missing in the game right now, showing us the thrust to weight ratio and delta V for each stage individually and we can even set them up for various situations such as starting on Kerbin or on the Mon. Custom Flags self-explanatory adds the ability to add custom flags. The Cheats Menu mod can also be very useful, especially in the buggy state the game is currently in, and it's going to allow you to test certain aspects of your designs without the necessary effort to do it legitimately. Micro Engineer is another extremely useful mod showing you a whole bunch of details about your orbits, targets, speeds, everything else that is already in the game but not actually displayed in the GUI. Less Wobbly is a mod for older people who experienced wobbly rockets, this might actually help you. The EVA mod allows you to get EVA back and dive into the cockpit view. Better Parts Manager aims to make the Parts Manager more lightweight by only opening up what you actually right click and not all the parts every time. This apparently also gets rid of the initial lag when opening the Parts Manager. We have WASD E and Q movement for the vehicle assembly building if you are more into the KSP1 navigation style and you simply activate it while holding the right mouse button which then allows you to move around. UI Scaler allows you to make the UI bigger and smaller depending on how far you sit away from your screen or how high of a resolution you have, things might get a little bit tiny. There's a mod Kerbal Patch Program, I'm assuming there's going to be a lot of bug fixes. Right now it isn't that extensive and the bug they fixed I haven't experienced so I didn't test it. There's a mod Lag Remover that aims to improve performance if that is an issue for you, but this seems to only come with minor improvements and major visual and gameplay costs. I would recommend you to not buy the game if you don't meet the specs yet. I'm sure the specs are going to be lowered once they optimize the game a little bit more. Time Warp Unlock seems to be a very useful mod, so you can just time warp at full speed no matter where you are. There's sometimes a bug that doesn't allow you to speed up all the way even though you are in complete space because it is dependent on the last vessel you've been in and this just completely bypasses the restrictions. Rendezvous Cheat allows you to bring a vessel close to another vessel in orbit so that you can dock the two together. So that is another useful mod to test your designs. Page Be Gone simply disables the tutorial by default and also mutes page so you don't get all of these pop-ups. Atmos Switch is a mod that allows you to switch vessels while moving within the atmosphere, which is something that is not usually possible, but in certain scenarios this would allow you to actually get something into orbit and land something else on the planetoid at the same time, if you time it correctly. The Kerbal View mod allows you to get into first-person perspective with the individual Kerbals, even if they are outside the vessel. There's also an FPS limiter mod in case you're interested in that, and you can simply adjust your maximum FPS using the F2 button. 
Now this project here makes me hopeful because this seems like an overhaul mod or that adds a lot of content into the game and I really hope this is possible with the future mods. I'm excited for those as well. Right now no contents for this one though. There are also first attempts for mods for transfer window calculators and this mod here Arbit's transfer calculator includes delta v and current as well as desired phase angles. There are also mods that I haven't mentioned that just deal with debugging stuff and that might be more useful for modders and interested people but you can still browse the rest of the mods that I haven't shown yet through the link in the description. Okay, it is time to have a look at a few select mods more closely. First and foremost, the Kerbal Parts Manager, which simply, when right-clicking something, opens up only the parts manager for the selected part. So I can toggle this landing gear without the lack of opening up the entire parts manager for everything on your vessel. This also works in flight, and so far I didn't notice any more bugs than the native game already provides. Another mod I want to showcase here is the stage info which you can open up with the engineer's report and you can also get access to that during the flight. Right here you can set up for each individual stage where it is supposed to be burning and all the information such as thrust to weight ratio and delta V are going to be calculated accordingly. This information right here is much more accurate than what you actually get here at the bottom because that delta V is always calculated in vacuum. Now that we launched the flight, we can get access to the info right here in the app bar. I'm going to open up the stage info panel and I can show all the stages or just the current stage, including the burn time in seconds. So useful. I can also open up Micro Engineer, which is the next mod that I would like to showcase and I will be pointing out some stats as we fly along. Currently you can get information about your vessel, your stages, your orbits, your surface and flight stats. But once you set a target, you also get access to Z information, which is useful when it comes to plan your transfer maneuvers. So without any further ado, let's get this rocket launched and we're gonna try to get it into orbit using some of the additional information. We're still gonna do everything as normal by the 10,000 mark. We want to reach the 90 degrees mark on the nav ball. There goes my first stage. We're just gonna ditch it and uh, 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 I've been a little bit quicker than I anticipated. So now I'm just watching my apoapsis until we reach about 100 kilometers while tilting the rocket more and more. And of course, we also get all the orbital information right here if we rather watch this we get time to apoapsis and everything there we go the apoapsis is now 100 kilometers and what we're going to do now is plan out a maneuver if we set this up right here create a maneuver node then i can go ahead and check out the maneuver node controller now instead of pulling on all of these guys and just getting quite unreliable results we can use the interface we want to burn prograde in order to establish the orbit so i'm just going to click on the large step a couple of times until we get something like an orbit but my apoapsis is growing so i want a radial shift into the other direction there we go and now i can also go ahead and actually right click the periapsis and apoapsis in order to keep seeing those which is just so freaking useful there we go now i have about 100 and 100 kilometers i'm gonna make sure to point my ship towards the node which is gonna be very soon but yeah this way you can just fine-tune everything so much better also when it comes to transfers oh and another thing you can see here is the burn time so micro engineer gives you all the access two very important stats that you actually require but right now i'm not able to toggle the engine so that might be a downside to parts manager but we've established orbits before and i was able to show what i wanted to show with these mods so now before we actually fall down let's toggle another mod which is the lazy orbit mod Right here, with a very easy interface, all we want is an altitude of 100 kilometers around Kerbin, set that orbit, and it is established. So if we check out the map screen right now, we can see we have a very nice and extremely accurate orbit. This is so useful when you just want to test out certain stages, such as how to get to the Mun or any other celestial object. And then of course we can also directly go to certain planets such as Eve, set that orbit and here we are. We can have a look at the planet and we can for instance test our landing stage right there. 
Of course, I would only recommend you to do that in your test saves and then have a legitimate save. But of course, as long as we don't have career mode and a lot of bugs, I think this might even be used in certain other instances other than testing. But yeah, of course, we can also use it to land somewhere. Let's go ahead and land on Eve or Moho. Why not? We're going to go ahead and click that. And here we are landed on Moho. We can test a rover built for this environment. And if we want to, we can get really advanced, maybe to test out certain satellite patterns that we want to set up, get a very specific inclination. But I guess even more important, if you want to test out a rendezvous design, we can also do that. Let's say we have a little station that we want to test if we can dock that to our current space station. I'm gonna go ahead and bring this into orbit for now. Okay, I don't think I even had to go into an orbit first. We could just have used the rendezvous mode selecting Kerbal K1 as a target and then rendezvous 100 meters away from it. And just like that, we find ourselves in orbit of the Mun. Let's go ahead and maybe target. Ooh, okay, looks like we have some visual glitches going on. Ah, right here, we can actually see the target. Let's point our vessel to the target and check out our docking skills. Man, this is actually so useful, let me tell you. Looks like we missed the docking opportunity by a little bit. Okay, that the map menu doesn't work is a little bit concerning. In the beginning, of course, some bugs are to be expected by using those mods. Maybe one more thing inside the settings, user interface, you have the UI scale. And you can see I can scale it, for instance, for readability, or I can make it smaller so it is not that much in the way. Wonderful. With that out of the way, I featured all the mods that I'm currently using in order to make the game more playable for me. And now we're going to get to the last part of this video where I'm going to quickly explain how to install the mods. It's very easy. Do not worry. In order to get these mods running, you require a mod loader for which you have two possibilities. Either you install Space Warp, which I did, but this doesn't allow you to use all of the mods, or you install Beep and X together with the Beep and X Space Warp plugin. I recommend you to install these guys because the combination of those is going to allow you to use all the mods. I didn't do it because I was getting visual glitches that I'm not getting with only the Space Warp mod. Whatever mod loader you're going with, you want to download them and put them in your Kerbal Space Program 2 main folder. To find the folder through Steam, right click on your game, go to Manage and Browse Local Files. This will open up the main Kerbal Space Program 2 folder and you can see I have my Space Warp plugin right here. If you used the BeepNX version, you will get some more, but just extract all of the zip files directly into this folder and you don't have to think about the folder structure. Once you've done that, it's time to start up the game once in order to generate all the folder structures within the mods. And you can see that everything worked if you get this new mods menu here. Opening this up will tell you everything about the mods that you have installed so far, which for you at this point should still be empty. Good. Once you've done that, you check out a mod, you go inside of the mod and check out which mod loader it is using. Right here, for instance, we can see it is using Space Warp and this always tells us where it needs to go. The download is always here on the top right. Usually the top folder within the zip file tells you which type of mod it is, but sometimes it's just the mod inside, like sticky orbit markers here. And then you will have to know whether it goes into the Space Warp folder or the Beep Annex folder. So usually all you have to do is grab the folder and put it into the main directory. However, if it doesn't have the entire structure, you just navigate your way to the correct location. Like I will go into Space Warp, then Mods and put the sticky orbit markers directly in here. And that's basically all to it. Just select the mod, check out which plugin it is using, and then you're good to go. BeepNX together with the Space Warp plugin is the recommended combination. But as mentioned, I did get some visual glitches with my control surfaces, so I decided against it for now. But the downside is it doesn't allow me to use mods such as the Time Warp, which is made for BeepNX. Wonderful. With that out of the way, I'm really looking forward to what this game has in store for us in the future. I'm sure the updates are going to tag along soon. A lot of the features that we're currently missing are already programmed into the game. They are actually inside of the code, but they are not being deployed just yet. So do not worry. The modders are going to save us in the meantime. And hopefully we can enjoy this game for the next decade to come thanks to the modding community mostly but there needs to be a framework to build upon with that out of the way thank you so much for watching have a great time and hopefully i'm gonna catch you in the next one bye bye